We are live. Welcome to Andor Season 1, Episode 4, Thoughts. This episode is called All Donnie. So, spoilers for basically everything Star Wars up to this point, including this episode. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, but I really, really love this episode. I So, yeah. And... So... Yeah, it's, it's cool to see Coruscant, first time we've seen it in live action, in an original trilogy set, filmed story. It makes sense that it is still the capital of the galaxy. And... I appreciate how, you know, this is a, an, edip, an episode full of people trying to convince other people about a certain course of action or piece of information, stuff like that. When you can make that so enthralling, you've got a great, like, script, cast, director, you know, like, I'm not sure there's a single scene of this that isn't people, like, okay, yeah, obviously it's tense when the, when the TIE fighter flies past, but it goes by pretty quickly. You know, when the when the guy is woken up and told, you know, like for a second you maybe believe what the guy is saying, you know, oh, yeah, all your men are dead, you know. Yeah, you know, there are threats made, but by and large, this is an episode consisting of people trying to convince other people. And it's just so unbelievably, it just, yeah, I could not, I was glued to my seat. For the entire, and just, yeah. And I, I like that, you know, while Luthen is working on convincing Vel, Cassian considers flying away, but, you know, there's a droid, it would stop him, so he just accepts, okay, I'm gonna stay here, because, you know, he doesn't want Luthen to realize that he tried to fly away. And I love the bit where Luthen dresses for working with senators. He puts on completely different body language. And, you know, once he's put on the body language, he just, he resigns himself to normal and walks away. So, you know, it is 100% clearly an act. This, it's not natural for him to be hobnobbing with senators, you know, selling these, you know, rare items. That's not what he wants to do. You know, clearly it's more the the... Ah, what's the word? Re rebel work. Right, and I am not going to talk about very many of the Easter eggs. Uh, you know, watch the videos by New Rockstars, Nerdist, and Screen Rant for those. And I, I like the, you know, when, when, you know, Luke, ah, and or. Cassian is trying to get his bearings, so he asks Vel, who, you know, I think it's something like, who is he to you, or something. And she immediately shuts that down. Like, he is something we are not going to discuss. When we arrive, I'm going to tell them that this was my idea. And, you know, there's only one of them who, like, invites him in. Everybody else is like, you're, you're not serious. This is, this is unacceptable. And, let's see. And, and, like, apparently, I mean, they don't say outright that they did not have a pilot, but I'm guessing whoever was going to fly didn't have that much experience, and, you know, Cassian does, so, you know, that, that was the state of the mission, you know, like, you know that you're in a bad situation when an upgrade like that, you know, he's a pilot, he speaks three different languages that could come in handy, you know, when that kind of upgrade is met with this kind of frustration and like, they would reject it 
if not let, I mean, basically she's in charge and they voice their opinions. She, you know, they can't talk her out of it. She's in charge. So, yeah. And the security officer is fired. The area taken over by Imperial forces, which is what his boss said is going to happen if they, you know, attract negative attention from them. And he returns to his mother. I have no idea where they're going with the character, and I love that. I literally, like, I could see how maybe he's going to try to redeem himself. Maybe he's going to go to the, the, some imperial, you know, like, yeah. If, if the, if the young woman who's trying to make a name for herself in the imperial, the, the security bureau... ISB, something like that, you know, if she finds out that there's this security officer who, I mean, he got in there, he he was, didn't he, I think he met Cassian, like, I mean, Cassian held a gun to his head, maybe she can use him, or if, if nothing else, she might try to use him as a fall guy or something, or maybe he's going to try to, maybe he'll end up completely on the other side, you know, helping the Rebel Alliance in some way. I I have no idea and I love it. Just yeah, I can't I can't wait to see where they're gonna go with that. And I like you know, Luthen runs this shop and that's how he can con uh, communicate with Mon Mothma and possibly other senators, you know. So, you know, oh, um, so, you know, she, she's there to buy a gift for her husband. And he's like, I have something amazing in the back room. I can't wait to show, you know. And and Luthen's assistant distracts Mon Mothma's assistant. But, but, you know, presumably Mon Mothma's assistant is not, um, you know, a spy for the Rebel Alliance. So, yeah. I appreciate that this episode has multiple scenes where Cassian can't hear what other people are saying as they are discussing him. You know, he is... His situation is very precarious. I think... I'm not sure... I, I, I haven't heard people saying this yet, but I could imagine some people will say, in this episode, Cassian is very passive. Other people tell him what to do, and he does it. If every episode is like this, I agree it would be a problem, but I think this is just, I mean, he's taking his first steps into a brand new world. He has not been intentionally working with the Resistance before. So, yeah, you know, if, nobody runs when they take their first steps. Sorry, Tony. And some tension between Mon Mothma and her husband. I appreciate seeing some politics and something set after the prequels. You know, the original trilogy also had some. And they explain the escape plan. Wow, that is that is flimsy, and I forget if it's I'm not sure it's said in the episode, but other people here on YouTube have been pointing out this is a suicide mission. This is not gonna, like, this has almost no chance of working. But, you know, so what's the trench run? So, you know, this is, yeah. Star Wars has a number of suicide missions, so that's, yeah. You know, so, yeah, so was going on to the, the Death Star to meet with... Um, the Emperor and Darth Vader, you know, talking Darth Vader into helping the 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 light side, you know, the mission on Endor, all these things, yeah. But yeah, when they explain it, when they explain it, they in this episode explain the escape plan, it's no wonder they can't postpone this mission. Like, it's now. Or three years from now, I, you know, who knows if the the imperial spy that they're working with, uh, the the yeah, the guy that explains the the whole 
thing. You know, he says, oh, I've seen it twice. He might not even be working there three years from now. Who says that they can stay in that, you know, like, within three years, they their camp might be discovered, even if they move around, you know. So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's now or never, basically, you know. So tense. I can hardly wait a whole week for the next episode. I have to see how this mission plays out. Just, as usual, Jess Gender did a great review. I 100% recommend her video on this episode. Yeah, just, I, I'm really, really loving this show. This is, this is by far my favorite Star Wars live action show. I, like, so much of this episode really felt like, you know, yeah, this is, this is the, this is how sabotage and that kind of thing during a dictatorship, you know, that's how it happens. You meet in secret, you, you keep, very, very few people know the, the details, and you know, you you really don't want to bring in someone new near the end, you know, and he's like, okay, so here's the plan, here's some phrase books, and the, you know, all this stuff, you're going to read that before tomorrow, you know, that it's not, it's not a question, it's an order, you know, so, so just, yeah, and let's see the... You know, and yeah, like what was it they said? The quarterly uh, payroll for an entire imperial sector. Wow, that's gonna put a dent in the you know, and and it's gonna fund a lot of you know Rebel Alliance missions. That's that's gonna holy crap, you know. And this idea, well, you know, there's not a lot of people in this place. You know, obviously a bunch of them are armed. There's no way that, you know, I would be extremely surprised if next episode has them, like, shooting their way out or something. And then the, you know, they fly through the, I forget what it, what he called it, but the, the hole, and, you know, and, and hope they get far enough away before the TIE Fighters. You know, because he points out, this is, this isn't an escape ship, this is not, this is like a cargo thing. You can't outrun a TIE Fighter in this. And, you know, if you, like, in, in the movies, yeah, there's some plot armor, but other than that, TIE Fighters are very precise and extremely fast, so, yeah, you know, I mean, even going up against the TIE Fighter in an X-Wing, you're taking a chance. But in something that much slower than an X-wing, yeah, is the the yeah. I I really like if you took away all the space stuff, all the specific Star Wars Galaxy stuff. This could have been like a story about World War Two, you know, saboteurs, you know, some some of the the people in occupied countries fighting against Nazis, you know, French or German, what have you. Just, you know, very few, very few people know it. They have, like, the, the just extreme detail and, yeah, you know what, there's a chance this isn't going to work. But, you know, I, I think, wasn't this also when the episode where Luthen said to Cassian, you're going to die doing this anyway. Wouldn't you rather die making a difference? You know, because if you, if you keep stealing from the, the Empire, at some point, it's going to go badly. They're going to kill you. Yeah, take a suicide mission. At least, you know, if you, if you make it out alive, you'll have made a huge difference. And if you died, at least you died trying to make a difference. Maybe that can inspire people, you know, so... Yeah, just, this this was absolutely amazing. I'm so happy to be, like, that, that Star Wars is this good again. You know, I maintain that 
you know, some aspects of the sequel to, oh, episode 7 and 8, not, not episode 9. You know, not everything about them was bad. And I continue to love The Mandalorian. I can understand why people love Obi-Wan Kenobi the series and The Book of Boba Fett. But this is really, like, this, holy crap. Uh, you know, and also, yeah, um, I think there's a lot of good about the Rogue One movie. I do think this show has already topped it. Uh, not in action, obviously. But I, I am more engaged in, in this show than I was for the first 40 minutes of Rogue One. You know, the last 40 minutes are awesome, but it would be great if, like, the entire, you know, because the entire, the entirety of A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back are amazing, so it's not impossible to make a Star Wars movie that's great from start to finish. Yeah, I, I'm really, really glad that this is Tony Gilroy because it's got his fingerprints all over it. Like, this is very... You can really see that this is the guy who wrote and directed Michael Clayton, Duplicity. He, let's see, he wrote, he helped write all of the, ah, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, Jason Bourne movies. And he directed the fourth one, uh, Le Legacy, I think it was called. Oh. Uh, it appears he did not write the most recent Jason Bourne. Maybe that's part of why it sucks. But yeah, he wrote the first four of them. H helped write. He wasn't the only person writing. But yeah. Right. Uh, Tony Gilroy and Dan Gilroy. And Dan Gilroy is also credited as a writer on this show. So yeah. You know, yeah. You can really see that this is, uh, like, you know, obviously, like, Part of the the Bourne movies is, oh, you know, he's super spy. Everything he touches, like, he's just amazing, you know, kind of. And that's not, you know, this show does not have, excuse me, an equivalent to that. And I do think that is probably for the, the best, you know. The, uh, but, but yeah, you know, this kind of thing of... Let's try to let like, let's try to approach this with as much realism and tension as possible. You know, let's you know. Don't get me wrong, James Bond movies can be fun to watch, but they really like. They they never really were particularly realistic, and that wasn't the goal. I'm not criticizing them for not being realistic. But by the time they started making Bourne movies, I forget about the miniseries. I, I just remember it as not being particularly good. I don't remember if it was realistic. But when they started making those movies, we wanted realism in spy fiction. And yeah, that's what we get here again. And I am here for it. It is just amazing to see. I, I've long said that the way to keep Star Wars alive is to keep reinventing it. And yeah, I mean, th this isn't the first, you know, like, yeah. Throughout the original trilogy, we have unexpected heroes, you know, fighting with very little in the way of material and, and all this stuff, you know. And they are, ah, what's the word? You know, yeah, and they're going on these seemingly impossible missions. But it's also very, like, um, again, not a criticism, 100%. I love those first two movies. It's very swashbuckle, kind of, and, you know, George, uh, George Lucas is bringing in all this stuff from his childhood. Uh, you know, he's, he's there are, there are sequences that are filmed and edited, like, movies from the 40s about Nazis, you know, including one by Lenny Riefenstahl. So, you know, that's very different from what this is. 
and yeah, you know, those movies weren't really supposed to be realistic. They're adventure. They're they're fun. You know, they're space westerns. And this is something very different, but it fits within the same world. And I really, really love that. That's just... This is the first time in a very long time... Like, I'm... That, that a Star Wars thing has made me legitimately feel like, no, they might actually lose. Like, there's some serious chance that the mission is gonna go terribly. Like, okay, yeah, I know Cassian survives because of Rogue One. He, you know, he only dies in that movie. He can't die here. But maybe everybody else dies. Like, I, I can, I can see how that might be a thing. Yeah, yeah, like, maybe... Maybe the mission ends with him being the only survivor. He gets away. Maybe he gets some of what they were there for, but maybe not all of it. The Empire is tracking him, and he's, like, wounded, and he, you know, he has to contact... I mean, yeah, I guess he doesn't even know how to contact Luthen. Um, I guess he doesn't know his name. Yeah, you know, some some kind of thing, and then they have to work with that, you know, like... Because there's no doubt, that I uh, I did not get catch her name, I'm afraid, but the, the young woman working for the ISB, you know, she, like, I'm, if her boss wants her to get more information, get, get more evidence first, I don't think she feels like that's a necessity, like, I, like, if she hears something that might be be connected, I think there's some chance that she's either going to go herself or send some people to investigate it. Consequences, consequences, you know, just, yeah, I, this is, this, this is amazing. I'm, I'm so happy they're making this. And, yeah, just, This is this is exhibit one when people when you're trying to argue with people who say that oh you know Disney Star Wars they don't know what they're doing they they it's all just garbage this is absolutely amazing and yeah I'm I'm so happy that we're getting like two entire seasons and like I, f I forget aren't they also like fairly long uh, I'm gonna look it up. Quick, the two seasons are both twelve episodes each, so that's that's a good amount. That's enough to tell a full story. That's not just you know, um, yeah, because that that was part of the problem with Book of Boba Fett and Obi Wan Kenobi. Too few episodes, and yeah, I this. I'm really, really psyched to, to see where this show is going. And, yeah, because, yeah, now that I think, I mean, in Rogue One, the, the overall, you know, the main mission he was on, it succeeded, but it was a suicide mission, and he, he ended up dying, you know. So, yeah, I, I think there's a very real chance, again, not of him dying, but of there being suicide missions on the show that, you know, by the, what is it, by the skin of their teeth, that, yeah, they just barely make it, kind of thing, and, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, so, let me know what you thought, and I will catch you next week.